Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to talk about the Weber carburetor and more specific about the velocity stacks. So in the past I made several videos on the Weber carburetor and even SU carburetors for that matter on how to adjust them, on how to dimension them, but I never talked about the ramp pipes and what is the effect of the ramp pipe on the performance of the engine and this is what we're going to talk about in this video. So the main purpose of a velocity stack is to smoothen the airflow into the carburetor, to avoid the turbulence that you may have at the intake, to improve the airflow through the carburetor into the intake manifold and into the cylinder. So that's its purpose. However, it has another purpose as well, and that is resonance. And this is what we're going to talk about. Short ram pipes, they tend to create a high pitch sound sounds very aggressive, whereas long ramp pipes, they are having a lower frequency of the sound and it's more kind of a throat sound. And typically you're not going to find ramp pipes on streetcars, but you can because of the noise they create. And the reason that this car has short ramp pipes is mainly because they couldn't fit any longer ones, but then again, this car is intended to be on the racetrack on higher RPMs and this is why these ramp pipes are probably quite all right. So now let's dig in a bit deeper onto the aspect of resonance and I know this is going to be a little bit technical. So fitting a ramp pipe onto your carburetor may look cool, it may sound nice, but it's not necessarily a good idea to improve the performance of your engine. So ramp pipes are typically fitted at the intake of your carburetor and this is a DCOE 45 and you can see they are fitted right here and they come a little bit in different shapes. Uh, they are typically uh, flared on the edges but they can also be kind of uh, going downwards, so tapered as we call it. And you have, of course, different types uh, and different sizes and diameters because it all depends on the carburetor you're going to run with. So now let's talk about resonance. What is resonance? So here we have the carburetor and of course the carburetor is going to be mounted onto an intake manifold. So the manifold will be sitting here and then on this side we will have the uh, cylinder head. So here we now travel through the ramp pipe through the barrel of the carburetor and then through the intake manifold into the cylinder head. And it's important that this flow is as smooth as possible. But as you can see, between the intake manifold and the ramp pipe, we have a certain distance. Now on some cars that can be much longer because the intake manifold is different. It can be that the ramp pipe is shorter or longer so that distance can vary and that's a very important distance. If you think about a four stroke cylinder then we know we have the four different strokes and at one moment in time we have the intake stroke. So the inlet valve is opening up and now we get the stream of fuel and air flowing through the ramp pipe and flowing through the carburetor and the intake manifold into the cylinder and the cylinder is now filling up. Now we have a steady stream going into it. At some moment in time, the piston is at its bottom dead center and the inlet valve is going to close. Well, when the inlet valve closes, it's like a boundary, it's like a wall. This flow of fuel and air is now going to hit that valve. And the effect of that is that it's going to bounce back. So that flow has molecules of air and fuel with a certain distance from each other depending on the pressure but when it hits that wall all these things will be compressed more together and the result is that you have a reflected wave which is of high pressure. So we have a high pressure reflective wave which is going to travel back from the intake manifold where it hits actually the valve all the way through the carburetor barrel all the way back to the end of the ramp pipe. And the point is then when that wave hits the end of the ramp pipe, here we have the atmospheric pressure. This is another boundary. And physics say that when that happens, when this high pressure wave hits it, these uh, molecules of air and fuel, they will kind of like 
spread around, they will diversify in all kinds of directions because they are no longer constrained, because the constraint what we have on the carburetor is or the ram pipe or the barrel of the carburetor or even the pipes inside the manifold. Everything is constrained, it's like one tube. And that is why uh, when this mixture or this high pressure wave hits this boundary on the outside of the ram pipe, it's going to disperse. And the result of that is that we are creating a rear wave. We are creating a low pressure wave backwards, back towards the carburetor, back towards the intake manifold and back towards the inlet valve. Now you might think this is really bad. It is not. This low pressure reverse wave is a good thing because it's going to help us. And this may sound a bit weird, but remember that your inlet valve at some moment in time uh, will have to open up again to get the fresh mixture in. Now, the way we get mixture into the cylinder is by the piston going down and creating a vacuum. Of course, the inlet valve has to be open, and because of that vacuum, we start filling the cylinder with air coming through the ram pipes and the carburetor and the inlet manifold. But as we are having a low pressure zone now created, this wave which was reflected back, hitting the valve, the inlet valve, it's going to help that vacuum creation of the cylinder a hell of a lot. So we now going to get a much better streaming, we get a much better suction effect. But some people will say, nah, that doesn't make sense. I would expect a high pressure in the intake path will be better because it's going to force air into the uh, cylinder when it's on the intake stroke. Well, the reality is it doesn't. The reality is that if we were to have this pressure, positive pressure, inside the intake manifold and onto the valve, then that positive pressure will actually um, nullify the um, vacuum effect that is happening by the piston going down because it's going to fill that up immediately and you're going to have a very poor suction effect. So in other words, a positive pressure in your intake manifold is not really any good. A negative pressure as a result of the uh, rear wave coming back to reflection back is a good thing to help you out in filling uh, the cylinders uh, with an air fuel mixture. I mean, how do we make sure that this low pressure wave, the rear wave as we call it, is coming back at the right time when the inlet valve opens up? And that is done by adjusting the length of the ram pipes. If I'm looking on this setup here, I would have my cylinder head right here, and the valve could be there now just opening up or whatever. I have a certain length of travel inside my inlet manifold. I have a certain length in my barrel of my carburetor, and I have a certain length of my ram pipe in the front of the carburetor. So that total length is a certain distance, and the high pressure wave, which is the result of the valve closing and the airstream hitting it, is bouncing back over that length. Then it hits the boundary on the outside of the uh, ram pipe, and then the low pressure wave goes really back. So it travels twice that distance before it hits it. Now the speed of these waves is about the speed of sound, which is about 343 meters per second. So if you now are able to play with this distance of the ram pipe, we can actually increase or reduce the distance these waves have to travel. And therefore, the arrival time of the low pressure wave towards the inlet valve can be regulated by just adjusting the length of the uh, ramp pipe. Now, of course, that sounds all very simple, but the fact is that our engine is running on different RPMs. Maybe we are driving on the racetrack and we're running on high RPMs, or maybe it's just a car that you use for mid to low RPMs. So in other words, the speed of the uh, engine is different. And if the speed of the engine is different, then the time that elapses between the inlet valve opening up and closing varies depending on the RPMs you run. So we need to run about 450 degrees of 
crankshaft rotation, and you can calculate this in a very simple way. Inlet valve opens up at top dot center, 180 degrees down. Inlet valve closes, I'm not talking about overlap now, closes. Then you have the compression stroke, then you have the labor stroke, and then you have the exhaust stroke, and then uh, the inlet valve opens up again. So it's like four times 180 degrees, which is quite normal for a car, but we deduct 180 degrees because the inlet valve closes 180 degrees typically after the um, inlet valve was opened up. So, uh, based on that, you can e easily calculate how much time elapses between the inlet valve closing and the inlet valve opening. Not that hard to calculate, and I'll show you that in a quick calculation on the screen in a few minutes. So that's the time. Now we also know what the time is uh, for these waves to travel through the inlet manifold, the carburetor, and the ramp pipe. Now, obviously, we know it's at the speed of sound, but there are many effects that will slow this down, like temperature, like humidity, and mixture composition, and so on. But I'm not going to consider these variables right now. So, um, let's say this is more or less a constant at speed. If I now make this ramp pipe longer, then the distance increases, so my return wave uh, will be slower than if I had a short ramp pipe installed. So this is how you can play by adjusting the ramp pipe. So high revving engines, they are moving much faster, so therefore the return wave has to arrive sooner, so therefore we're going to shorten the distance, so we're going to put a short ramp pipe in. If, on the other hand, we're running with low to mid-range RPM engines, then we want to make sure that this return wave is a little bit delayed because we are running slower, so therefore we're going to put a longer ramp pipe in. And this is how simple this really is, not very complicated. You can't tune the engine for both low and high RPMs with ramp pipes. You have to make a decision. This is not a variable, it's a fixed size, so you can't really uh, vary that. So before you decide what type of ramp pipes you want, you might want to decide first of all, where do you want to have the torque on your engine? In the high RPM range, like for racetracks, or more in the mid-range, or more on the lower RPM side. So depending on that, you would go for a long one or a short one. And as I said before, short ones are for high RPMs, long ones are for lower RPMs. I don't think that's that difficult. Uh, you can do these calculations quickly uh, by measuring the distance of the complete part from the valve stem when it's closed all the way through the inlet manifold, through the carb, to the edge of your uh, ramp pipe. And then you can do some calculations based on the RPM so you can more or less decide what the length should be of your total path. It's always the total path that counts, right? For, from the valve to the outer part of the ramp pipe. That's the length that is important, and we can vary it with the ramp pipe. Now, some people uh, are using scoops on their car. So, a normal carburetor is a normal aspirated carburetor, right? So it does not have any forced induction of air. But if you're putting a scoop up in front of the car, so while you're racing on the track, air is coming in in this opening here, and it goes with a ducting towards the carburetor. So the whole intent is to have more fresh air and have kind of a forced induction on the carburetor. The faster we drive, the more air pressure we'll have in this region here. And that can have a negative effect on the resonance of the intake system. Um, you're kind of going to create a high pressure zone around the carburetor because you're going to bring that fresh air around the carburetor. So the atmospheric pressure in front of the ramp pipe is now no longer the same. It's no longer atmospheric. It's going to be higher. Now if this is higher, the result of that will be that the return wave will be not having the same low pressure. It's going to be less low pressure. And that of course is not good because it's going to reduce that suction effect of your piston going down and sucking in the airflow, so you're not going to have a real nice airflow. This is not a good thing to have, so you need to be very careful when you're putting a scoop up on, on how that's going to work. Now, a scoop is good to create a massive amount of air volume, 
But it's not only the volume that counts, it's also the air velocity and of course the consistency of the flow. So you need to make a proper balance between resonance and of course the uh, amount of air mass that you're going to get in. And therefore there are smart designs of air boxes that actually bring you the benefit of the boat. But that's a little bit more complicated to calculate all this. Maybe we do this on another video. So I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did.